I wasn't ready. Good morning, everybody. Pray for Lord. This is Faithful Blows and Ministries, home edition again. <laughs> welcome to the coronavirus and welcome to Revelation, people. Okay, um, first of all, me and my wife were talking the other day about um, a scripture verse that had came up numerous times in the past, and uh, I had uh, told her that I've gotten the same answer from probably dozens, if not a hundred people, as to what it means. This is what it means. This is what it means. This is what it means. And they're always very, very similar or almost the exact same thing. Sometimes they were the exact same thing. And um, as you guys know, I'm not always a, a very agreeable person when it comes to religion or even biblical interpretation. I'm not really big on receiving anything I'm told. I need to have the uh, revelation from God to verify things, you know? So I had trouble believing that. I was like, this doesn't sound right. How can that be? So I never believed it. And last week we were talking when we were watching TV and we were doing the morning devotional and it was on Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. And it's always been one of my favorite verses for a lot of reasons. But um, she was reading it and when she got into like the fourth or fifth word, I go, oh my God, wait a minute. And I looked up and I was like, I got a revelation for this. I finally found out what God meant on that because of another verse that went with it and then another one went with that. So um, it was really interesting how it works. Um, I printed it out right here. Um, I'll, I'll, this is for only for my reference. I always read from the actual scripture. That way you can see I'm reading from the book and not from a stupid paper. Okay? So I want you to think, you know, I'm misleading anybody. If anything, I'm leaving my own damn nation, not anybody else's. <laughs> anyway, praise the Lord. But um, it starts out in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It's called Eternal Clouds of Judgment. What's your take message? Let's put it in Hebrews 12. It says, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And then talk about looking to Jesus as an author of Christ or a faithful people. You know what I already to begin to get the awful Um When we're talking about the um, the, the verse one here, I was thinking, there's a lot of things you can talk about. We talk about the endurance, we talk about the race, we talk about you know the sin, we talk about you know um, all these different things. But when I used to ask them, I used to say, what is this great cloud of witness? What is it? Oh, it's the angels that testify against you. And I never really thought about it, but something was wrong with that picture. There were a lot of different reasons. Okay. Um. The first thing that was wrong with it was the Bible strictly tells us that we shall judge the angels. The angels do not judge us. That is an introverted scripture. It's backwards. Okay? The reason for that is because angels were, um, were celestial beings. They were created beings by God. Okay? Well, they're already set in their ways. They only serve one purpose, to bring honor to God and obey what he says to do, in regards to what it is. Go, 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 do the do, yeah, 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 hot water, hot water, right? Okay. <laughs> it's like that. People are different. We're biological beings, and we, and we have a spirit inside of us, and that spirit comes with free will. We make a lot of bad decisions along the way and, and make a lot of mistakes along the way. But because we're biological creatures and not celestial creatures, we don't have the same requirements and have the same expectations before God to do such things. So I was thinking, well, how come we're going to judge them and all of a sudden they're going to judge us? That's not proper, proper biblical interpretation. But there's something was wrong with that. Furthermore, there was another issue. And that issue is in Romans. That's not the right way, man. It's a, it's a Psalm 150. Go to Psalm 150. Romans will wrap it up. Psalm 150. Yes. Okay, we can do that. I don't want to mislead anybody. I want to make sure you get right to the horse you know. Okay, if I'm teaching bad scripture, then I'm a bad teacher. I mean, that falls the area of heresy. We don't have heresy. We do. You know. <laughs> Check this out. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. 
Praise him in the firmament of the power of what that enemy is. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the salt, psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbal. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. And then I'm going to talk about a couple, about a couple of the different things there in a second here. Here's the thing. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Okay. Now, let's get to the crux of the monster, shall we? The thing is, we're talking about being judged by the angels, right? We're not being judged by the angels. Everything that has breath is a testimony is, is what it testifies against us. Either testify for us or against us. The gladiolas testify against us. The dog testifies against us. The bird testifies against us. The spirit of God sees, he testifies against us. The angel of God can testify as secondary witnesses against us, but they'll testify against us because they don't have breath. The celestial beings. Everything that has breath, everything on this earth that breathes is accountable before God, and they all testify either for or against each other, one another, before God. Okay? That might sound crazy, but I why I said don't get caught up in a tangled web of lies and don't get yourself in a bad mess in the situation and no go out in the jungle and get caught up in these, you know, living the plants that keep going. I swear some speaking, there's some truth to that, you know? But right here it says on the um, it says in verse one, praise him in the firmament of his power. You know what that word firmament means. Firmament is like a strong, hard, rock solid establishment. Something that cannot be broken. Its power is everlasting and everlasting. It can never be broken, right? Okay? And right down here, it says salty and hard. I'm hoping to suggest this, people. I don't know what that means. I don't, I'm, I'm assuming that salty is some kind of a um, musical instrument. I don't know. But where I'm going with this particular message is this, okay? It finishes up in Romans, verse 1, chapter 20. And this was in a great, great detail as Paul so often wonderfully does in his books. I think outside of Jesus, you know, I, I like Paul the best because he, he, he really breaks down things at such a level that lays it down where it's almost like a concrete slave in your head. In Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Okay. I'm in the book. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start in verse 19 instead of 20. The 20 wraps up, but 19 actually opens the, um, the uh, way for it. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being therefore understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Oh boy. Okay? You can't say the devil didn't do it. You can't. The creation is set before you. You know a creator put it there. The word of God tells you put it there. The, the witnesses testify that they're there. All the prophets have told you. All the foundations have been laid. Everybody told you there is a God. He is a loving God. He's an eternal God. He's an omnipotent God. All powerful God. We also a judging God. We know that, okay? So when they say, oh, well, I don't know what I was doing. Oh, I was out of my mind. I wasn't able to do it. Hey, preach to the guard. Preach to the guard. I stand without excuse. I have no excuse, okay? The only thing I can do is fall down on my face and say, holy, 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 please forgive me, God, or I'm not wrong, okay? But see, right, the, the, the invisible things, see, of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Now, you can ask me, how could something be invisible be seen? Well, if you ever watch any astronomy shows, you know, shows on TV, I mean, a lot of you guys don't really believe in astronomy, I'm not putting my faith in astronomy, but it's an interesting topic. If you watch astronomy shows on TV, they talk about the neons and the ions and the atoms and all the things that come in, the protons and electrons and neutrons, and how, how they come together, they form things, and they, and they make an interesting situation. Okay? We know all that was done by God, and even when the 
put the, um, the gravitational board in there and all the power you need to be in there to make it work together. But it's really interesting to see that. Funny thing is they're all invisible. Okay? My breath is invisible. But it can carry death right now. With the coronavirus, I can kill somebody. If I don't want to watch out, okay? And the word of God said that too. Jesus says, um, um, the, the word of God is like the way that you see it, not I know, I know not where it comes from or where it goes, but yet you feel it and know it's here. I know the spirit of God is you something you feel it and know it's there, you know? You know the word you gotta take people or where the word is coming from sometimes. And we don't know where to find God. I keep telling people God found me. I never found him. I went on a quest to find him out. I never figured him out. I was really, really hardcore. I'm gonna figure this guy out, I'm gonna find out who God is, where he is, I'm gonna find him. I was sitting on a street corner, dumbfounded, confused, out of my mind, crazy, totally out of my mind, trying to figure out how did this happen, okay? Well, these things happen when that happens, so I was able to start a Bible study, and I had a little outreach against people who went out there to see this kind of place. Anyways, that's a side story. We're talking about an invisible God that nobody sees, right? Everybody sees God because the evidence is there, okay? The evidence. We have an evidence of speaking in tongues. We also have an evidence of the Spirit of God residing within us by our actions. We also have evidence of, of God being a creator by everything around us. We have evidence of God's love and things in the Son of God. These are all evidence things. So, I don't know. Take me to court? I don't know. But I think I've got a lot of evidence, you know, to so the, the, the stand on my behalf and be part this matter. But like I said, I'm always open to suggestions on, 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 as far as biblical interpretations because certain things seem weird sometimes. I'm still trying to figure out how it was that um, the devil walked up to God and Job. I still have trouble believing that. I don't understand how that works. But anyways, the thing is, I don't believe what's in the we are also in comfort with such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight, right? We are so in confidence with every such a, with such a great cloud of witnesses, okay? Yeah, in confidence means we're surrounded on all five. You can't even see through them because they were so full. I mean, like, everybody's so packed in there, you can't even see little holes through, 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 the, through the clothes. You can't. It's just packed in there, okay? And so the great cloud of witnesses, okay? I don't think we said cloud it means an angel because you say, well, an angel is going to cloud. But no, it's not supposed to put a hang on the clouds, because they're all one place, okay? <laughs> so I don't really believe that either. That's kind of a Catholic thing, I don't know what it is. But um, a, great, a great cloud of witnesses, to me, would be you're surrounded by everybody who testifies that Jesus is Lord. This is what happened. This is what you did. This is where we're at. This is the situation. Welcome to Revelation, right? That's what it is, okay? I think of Revelation comes of God and the Lord shows you something, you do definitely have to study your shoulders. You definitely have to have a prayer life. You definitely have to go forward in the Lord and in the capacity which you're called. You have to do all these things according to that. But you also have to allow God to use you, allow God to move in your life, and allow God to, um, to say, hey, um, you're wrong. This is what it really means. This is what we're really going with this. This is the situation. This is what's happening. La 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 la. Now, you know, I kind of like, pay attention, boy. And there's, there's, that's what we are. We're, we're a bunch of little baby children. We don't always listen to God. And even God can tell us what to do, we still won't do it. Okay? So I wanted to tell you guys, you know, you guys are surrounded by such a great part of witnesses. And you're so encompassed with them. Because everything that has breath praises the Lord. And when they see you not doing it, and they're going to testify to God that you're not doing it. Those pansies out there are going to testify against you. That, you know, that cool up in the trees is going to say, yeah, I saw him do that. You know what I mean? I know this sounds crazy. You would think, well, we don't think on all levels that animals and plants judge us. Right here it's saying they do. That they will judge us according to the truth of the Word of God. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Now, it doesn't say things that don't have breath. But, the Lord himself did say that too. Interesting, huh? Jesus says, um, shall I shut everybody up that the rocks may cry out? Right? Okay? Rocks don't even have breath that they're going to cry out. And you're going to let God be God. 
<laughs> I remember the mule spoke too, right? And Papa said, I'm not going. He goes, oh, yes, you are. He goes, what? <laughs> so I, I'm not convinced, you know, that, that, that the angels are the ones that are going to be judging us. I'm convinced that we're being judged by everything around us that can testify against us. And when you think you're not being watched, you are being watched. When you think you're not being judged, you are being judged. When you're back there in a closed door, gambling or cussing or doing things you ought not to be doing, God sees it, okay? Now, I'm not saying that you didn't walk through all the time. We're going to still do things we shouldn't do. I'm not encouraging you to do that. I'm not discouraging you to do that. But we still will. Because we have this thing called momentary leftist of reason. Momentary leftist of weakness. Momentary left of temptation. The Bible says you ought, you ought not to give yourself a temptation, right? It says you ought, you ought to give yourself unto what? Prayer, right? Okay? That's what I'm saying, yeah. But rather than, rather than allowing yourself to remain being tempted, rather than allowing yourself to remain in sin, rather than allowing yourself to walk openly right into the devil's mouth, there's an altar. It's there for you for prayer, okay? It's there for you to get in this word right here and read it and yourself to see if that that's true, okay? I can stand here all day long. <laughs> Not, not, this, this, this is crazy, but let me just tell you, I can go in here, I can read a scripture book. I can read every single word in there completely wrong, completely misconstrued, completely misapplied, and completely misinterpreted. And I'll apply it in, in a totally carnal way, just to deceive me. Okay? And you were going, I don't want to fall in there, right? Would, I, would that commend me to God? I can do quite the opposite. It would condemn me before God. He would say, not only are you using it for self-glorification purposes, you're also using it to manipulate my seed. And like, like he said, he said, you, don't, you yourself don't want to go in, and you want to block those that would. Okay? I'm not down with all that. I don't collect offerings. I'm not looking for a big building. I'm not looking for all these other things that everybody else is looking for. I'm looking for the people in the kingdom to come. We are in the last days. People are dying left and right. This may be your last opportunity. Okay? I want to make sure you know that the great cloud of witnesses surround you doesn't just testify against you and judge you, he also testifies for you. And they also stand on your behalf as well to say, Lord, yes, he did your will. Yes, God, you know, we, we stood here from, from afar, we're the squirrels, from, the, from whatever far. And we saw him walk in the park, and we saw him hold that, that homeless guy's hand. We saw him pray with him. We saw him do it with our own eyes. So these people, cops, whoever they are, is lying on this guy, saying that he didn't pray for the homeless guy, he did pray for the homeless guy. We, we stand with this and bear testimony to that. Okay? So I want you to be aware that the eyes of God are here for us. Okay? Remember 1984? Yeah, most of you do. Okay? Big Brother's watching you. Big Brother's Jesus. I want you to understand that. He is. He is watching you. And he knows when you're slipping up, but he also knows when, when, when you're edging up. I want to encourage you guys tonight to just. Thank you. Okay? God bless you. I love you all.